Well, hi, and thanks for joining me again for another microscope video, and it's going to be more record player needles, as I do my best to train myself and anyone else who's watching on how to examine a needle underneath a microscope. So, now this time, I've got seven needles to look at, and uh, here, here they are, just to show you how I have them arranged. That's my slide, and there's the seven different needles. See, there's actually two different styles here. This style and this style, and the way they connect or uh, snap into the cartridge is a little bit different. At least one of these is a 78. I'm pretty sure this black one over here is also a 78 RPM needle. And we're just going to go across and take a look at them under the microscope. As I've done quite a few times already, only this time I'm going to be using a, a different light source that I have rigged up here. And you can see the light here on the microscope. They're very bright light. That light is from a white LED. And uh, actually there's three little LEDs and they're kicking out a fair bit of light, especially at close range. As I guess you can tell from looking at the microscope there. Put the slide in place here. Now this microscope has a nice stage on it that I can move using uh, controls. So I can move it very carefully. That's these controls down here. Move, they move the stage back and forth and up and down so I can bring different needles into view. Let's get the first one here. Here's what I'm seeing. Now we're starting on low power. We're starting with the first needle. So I'm looking down at the cantilever, the needle is pointing up at the lens. If you've watched my other videos, very, very similar. There's the cantilever focused. And now I just bring the focus up. Very tricky when you get to the top of the diamond because it's a diamond. Uh, it's a little like focusing on a piece of glass. So tang it up. We'll go over them on this lower power, then I'll snap it up on high power. We'll go over them again. So that's the first one. And then we'll move over to the next one. Sometimes the best way to learn stuff is through comparison. That's what I'm hoping to do. So here's another one. The elevation on my microscope stage is different, which is why I have to focus. This one is pointing straight up into the, into the lens. There's the top of it there. Right there. A little easier to focus than the last one. Okay, and back down to the back down to the bottom. Now we'll go to the next one. This one's red, which I'm pretty sure means it's actually a sapphire. Sapphire is a softer material. you're asking yourself, are these needles worn out? I'm going to suggest you're not going to know by looking at this part of the video. It's not easy to tell if a needle is worn out. There is a special technique, and if you've been watching my other videos, you know I've been working on it without a huge amount of success. Although this new light I'm using has really improved things. And there's the cantilever that the up the shaft and at the top is the needle right there. Now we're going to go to those last three that look so different. Uh, 
made no attempt to clean any of these, but I have been handling them with my fingers. Kind of ruggedly. See that point of light? You can see the shadow? Let's start with the shadow. There. The shadow. There, you can see it moving. And you can see there's also a point of light in the shadow. I think that's literally the diamond acting as a lens and focusing the incoming light to a point on the far side right on top of the, uh, the cantilever. So I think that's what we're seeing there. I think this would be pretty interesting under high magnification. There's some funny black dots in there. Okay, let's go on to the next one. This one looks like it's colored red. This is the first time I've seen these also. It's amazing how rough the cantilever metal looks when you see it like this. We'll come up on the focus now. Now on this one, when you look at the needle part, right, it looks like a red ring around something that's not so red. You know, the red ring is the support post onto which the diamond or whatever it is, I'm not sure what it is on this one, has been glued or attached. I assume it's glued in place. You can actually see a change of dimensions as if the diamond is smaller than the shaft it's stuck on. Don't know how true that is. And that's what it looks like to me. And we'll go on to take a look at the last one. This one's very clearly a sapphire. I was going to say sapphire diamond. That doesn't quite work, does it? There's the uh, cantilever. And there's a diamond. Looks like some debris. Oh, what's that going on? a little certainly no. okay let's take a look at these under higher magnification starting with the last one first working my way back Focusing up, up, up. Still focusing up, up. Getting into the diamond or the sapphire, whatever it is. And it's a little tricky. There we go. I think we're getting right to the top now. Just take a look at that for a minute. Think about where the uh, cantilever, the angle of the cantilever, you can see it down there. And that indicates which way the needle runs in the groove. And if you're at all familiar with records, you can figure it out. And if you ran a needle in the groove until the thing was completely and utterly worn out, so the bottom of the needle was hitting the groove, you would start to cut it from a point into a chisel shape and the chisel will align with the groove. I think that's what we're looking at here. I think we're seeing it. The needle is so worn. It's actually adopted a chisel shape. Now, why would there be more than one chisel there? Because there's two lines. Well, that could be an effect from the light. Let's just swing the light, or swing the uh, sample around a bit here. Give me one second. See, quite clearly, there's an angle where the light reflects, right there. And that angle, the incidence at that angle, I guess that's the way to put it, is onto the side of the needle, the side that would drag along the groove. 
So you see, it's all kind of making sense on this one. I think, personally, I would pronounce this needle worn out. Not very surprising. It's a sapphire needle, generally used for 78 records. But I'll bet you you can't play 20 or 30 sides before you start getting extensive wear on these guys. There's another sapphire one here. I think we'll see almost the same thing. Let's work our way back now. There's the next one. Again, this one's got a red color, but the top part... so red other than it's picking up some red. Now this one you see kind of a dot at the top and to the side you can see a white area. I believe that's a flat spot on the side of the needle. So all needles with somewhere are going to have flat spots on either side where they're dragging up against the side of the groove. The point doesn't touch. The point rides above the bottom of the groove. It doesn't drag through the valley. Some degree of wear showing. Let's rotate the uh, microscope here a little bit. Oh, we can really see the. Oh, looks like that's got a big long straight line in it, too. I just thought to myself, I wish I could look, look at these under a microscope, see what's really going on. <laughs> I am looking at them under a microscope. This is what you get. Let's rotate a little bit. See, you expect a round surface to reflect a point of light like that. But a flat surface is going to do something like that. So I deem this needle worn out. I'm not absolutely sure, but I think the more experience I get, Let's go to the next one. Where's that needle? That's not the needle. I already see a reflection of two line, two parallel lines on the surface. Uh, but those are, are totally the wrong direction for wear from a record. I'm going to assume that that's just some light effect. I mean, there's light bouncing around. And uh, better to ignore that. Let's continue trying to focus here. Yeah, see that was just an effect of the light. Here we see two dots on the side. Again, the light is striking it on the side of the needle. Let me rotate again. And it's the same kind of thing. Here it's more like a dot, almost almost uh, out of sight, in fact. Bring it around here. As soon as the light is shining on the side of the needle, you see what I think is a big flat spot. Why, again, I don't expect there to be two lines. I would think there'd be a dot at the point and then a flat spot which might look like a line looking down on it like this. You have to use your imagination here. Because it really, I've tried and tried and tried. I've done a couple hours off camera on this to actually see the flat spot. I haven't been able to yet, not directly. It'd be a little like looking at a piece of glass with a chip. And the best you can do is get light to reflect off the surface. You can imagine what that would look like if you chipped a piece of glass and looked at it, and you would see all kinds of striations in the chip because it doesn't chip cleanly because glass is an amorphous material. It's not a crystalline material, so it doesn't cleave flat. It leaves all kinds of striations, variations. So same sort of thing with this, I would think. I don't think dragging it along the inside of a record groove is going to make a nice usually flat surface. 
Okay, so that's those three that were the same type. Now we'll go to the first of the four. It should be somewhere here. Okay, I think that's it. Just way out of focus. There it is. Wow, does that look a ton bigger than the last one? Get it centered up here. It's great I've got these uh, stage controls for moving it. Okay. You already see uh, something going on, but that shiny part appears to be coming from way down below the uh, needle. Let's focus upwards here. Oh my gosh. Interesting. So that. That, from that thing that looks like the bottom of an iron, uh, yeah, you know, for ironing your clothes, is really the result of some kind of reflection way down here. It's probably a curved surface right in there, you know? That's probably the diamond cone on which the diamond is glued has been fitted into this piece of metal somehow. That's probably the curve on the, on the fitting right there. All part of learning how to do this. Now, going back to the tip of the needle. I'll, I'll rotate the uh, light a little bit. See what we get here. Two dots traveling. One of them, I, I, I think, the one on the left is the uh, bright spot where the uh, light is just reflecting off the curved surface of the needle point, and the other one shouldn't be there, but it's there because there's a flat spot. expect it to follow all the way around. The flat spot should disappear. It should only appear over here. And you know what? we got to turn this a little bit further here. Oh! <laughs> I have no comment. <laughs> I don't know why there's a huge reflection coming there. Because the angle is not where you would expect the light to be hitting a flat spot. And those, a number of the needles exhibit this trait of the flat spot seems to be on the back. As I was saying before, I would be pretending the needle is a car driving down the, the groove, then I'm sh this way, I'm shining the light on the back bumper where the needle should be perfectly smooth. I mean, look at that. Since I'm teaching myself, I think I have to accept that that's what a smooth surface looks like. And that uh, volcano-like pile of uh, light coming out of there is more an effect of the light passing through the microscope lenses and its focal point of the light, if I can put it that way, showing up inside the, the uh, microscope. That's, that's my explanation of it. It's an artifact of the microscope and its multiple lenses. Okay. Uh, next time you want to know if your needle's worn out, just give up and buy a new one. <laughs> and count the number of records you play. Uh, diamond needles, generally good for 100 plays. Let's go to the next one here. Uh, this is the other sapphire needle. Okay, there's the 
pop. Now look at this one. This one is different than all the others. I cannot create a point of light. That's the best I can do. The shaping of that, again, if, uh, you know, if we're not exactly looking at something. We're looking at light reflecting from a surface. But you can see the tang down below there get an idea of which way this is running through the record groove and that spot by the way the needle is not pointing absolutely straight up it's tilted a bit you get that very strange top to it so I would have no problem saying this needle's worn out hey it's sapphire look at look at that look at that beam coming off it there. I mean, it certainly is not a nice smooth point, whatever it is. And it's sapphire, uh, it's probably had the heck played out of it. I wonder how many people are playing old 78 records using an old record player with a worn out needle and what they're hearing they think is the way it's supposed to sound when in fact the sound quality is degraded by the needle they're using. Let's go on to the next one. And I bet you the answer to that question is a lot of people, maybe even including me, I do have a 78 player and I did not think to take the needle off it to bring it in here. Okay, so we're back to a diamond needle now. This one seems to be the most pristine of all of them. So there, there's the top. Right. This one is really, really interesting. The reason is, what is that dark spot? What's that dark spot there? Uh, I don't think I'm going to be able to give you a real good look at it, but earlier on my own, I got a view of this, it's this needle. I don't think it's on video. <laughs> Maybe it is. I've done so much of this lately. I'm losing track of what I'm up to. Uh, it's actually a piece of the needle missing, like a chunk of the diamond has fallen out or, 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 or broken off or something like that. So you see one bright dot and then a bunch of others to the right of it. Let's Let's rotate. And so, look at that. See that? This is just perfect. This is exactly what I would hope to see. Let's let me shut up and focus it again, just in case I'm... Very tricky. Now, you see those three dots? Those three dots are the three LED lights reflecting back from the surface of the diamond. That's why there's three dots. So, you know what? Maybe that's part of the problem with my current setup. So what I'm, I'm doing is I'm focusing this to eliminate the three dots. And in doing that, I'm really throwing the whole thing off. I need one pinpoint source of light. What I have to do is I have to block two of the three LED diodes. So only one of them is shining. I think that's really what I should do. I think that's the lesson on this video. Now that looks like we're looking right at a flat spot. I'm rotating the light back and forth over it. Now we'll go back to the last needle. Now, it appears to be at the top of the support cone. Or and there's the needle coming up to the top.
single point of reflection. So now you've got to kind of wonder, how do you get one point of reflection from three little lights? There should be three points of reflection. Whoosh. Huge reflection there, but again, I'm shining the light at the back bumper of this needle. So, curious, eh? It's curious to me. Okay, well, I think what I gotta do is I gotta fix my light so I only have one LED shining and, uh, and take a look again.